Hey everybody, this is a video I shot this past summer, uh, summer of 2014. Uh, it's a little project I did where I uh, adapted my Weber Q grill to uh, work with the uh, fifth wheel trailer. The grill that came with our RV uh, was a really uh, cheap stamp steel piece of junk. I was uh, cleaning it one day and realized that it had already started to rust and uh, was leaking around the regulator unit. So uh, I decided I was going to trash it and uh, I liked the Q grill. And I decided, well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to use that with the fifth wheel permanently. So I had to do some modifications. And one of the modifications was I wanted to find a way to mount it on the platform that is on the trailer, uh, but also have the versatility to be able to remove it quickly in case I wanted to actually use it on a uh, table. But unfortunately, uh, I lost some of the video at the very beginning. Uh, not a lot, but I, I had started... The by removing the old grill, I just basically unbolted the old grill, some of the hardware, and threw it out. As I finished drilling all the holes, and then what I did was I took a square file, and I hand filed all the holes so that the uh, carriage bolts now will go in, and the square part of the carriage bolt will will catch on that. Uh, oh, I'm gonna make a liar out of me. It's tapered. Must have gone in from this side when I tried it. Yeah, there you go. It's going to go in from that side and, and be captive now so that uh, when I tighten it, it'll work the way it's supposed to work. All except for, of course, that one oversized one. But I'll just grab that with vice grips and go to town on it. I marked these right and left. So I could remember exactly which ones go where. I'm going to be utilizing these clips that actually also were leftovers from the disassembly on the um, on the bleachers. I'm going to put one of these at the very rear here on each one of these. And what that's going to do is when I slide the grill in, it's, the legs are going to hit that and that'll keep the grill from being able to slide in too far. Alright, so this is what it looks like so far. Now I've got this extends up far enough to support the grill. The grill sits down in between these two. I've got this metal bracket on the back here to act as a stop to keep it from going all the way when I slide it in from going in too far. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these other angle brackets, I'm going to cut them to the length, and I'm going to bolt them on to the brackets to this side area here. And that's going to create a situation where this will be held captive, so when it tries to come up, it won't be able to come out. But I'll still be able to slide it out back, backwards, off the side, uh, off the back end of the uh, trailer. All right, so now I just temporarily clamp these uh, these other brackets in place the way they're going to be bolted on, just to give an idea how this basically works. So the idea being that that's going to keep it from being able to pull out. Now it is going to be able to do this when it's going down the road though, which isn't going to be ideal. But the original grill actually had snap lock clasps that kept this closed when you're going down the road. So I can't afford to have this bouncing like this going down the road because if you hit a really big bump, like going over a bridge abutment or something like that, I, I run the risk of this popping up and maybe might even losing my grate. Kind of far-fetched scenario, but don't want to find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, ratchet strap around this and ratchet this down. It'll do two things for me. That'll hold this closed when I'm going down the road, but it'll also be an extra added measure to keep this nice and solid. So it might seem like a bit of overkill, but I certainly wouldn't want to be somebody driving a car behind me and have this thing, either the great fallout in front of you or the whole thing give away. So the only way, once I get this all bolted and ratchet strapped in there, the only way that's going to come off going down the road is if the main pedestal part or the arm itself breaks off, which that's all solid steel and welded. So that shouldn't, uh, that shouldn't be an issue. That should be able to take the strain. And then, of course, I can't do it because the clamps are in the way right now, but what's going to end up happening is when I get this all done, 
when I want to take this off, all I have to do is slide the grill out. So I can take it off to clean it or move it if, I, if we don't want to have it on the arm. The way this arm works, the arm, you pull a pin right there at the corner. Right here at this corner, you pull that pin and the whole arm swings out and swings around and puts the grill in a position here, kind of like forming an L with the face of that door, which is the outdoor kitchen. All right, so I've got the brackets on both sides bolted in. Now it's in. Now I need to uh, drill some holes through here and put some long bolts that will go all the way through here. And that will be one of the things that will keep it coming out like that. And then of course I still plan on doing the strap around the whole thing through the handle here and around the whole frame. Because with all my great engineering and all this sturdiness and care that I took, I forgot to account for one thing which makes this severely flawed from an engineering standpoint. And those of you who caught it early on, well, I give you a cookie. A cyber cookie, that is. Those of you who don't realize what it is yet, I just came to realize that this whole mount is only going to be as strong as these feet that it's holding down or keeping captive and unfortunately these feet are plastic so this is my weak point right here what could ha eventually happen is eventually the plastic could crack here and this whole unit could break free and fall off the only thing I have going for me is the fact that it shouldn't spend a lot of time doing this pulling up on but it will be doing this going down the road. And the question is, over time, will that stress this plastic? So I'll just have to keep an eye on that and see if I see any cracks developing around the legs. All right, so now I got a tie-down strap on there. Tie-down strap on there, it's, it's pretty secure. Of course, the problem with the ratcheting strap is that as I tighten it down, it's actually putting more stress on these plastic legs. I notice these plastic legs actually kind of bow in. I didn't notice that before. I don't know if that was by design or if they actually kind of like deformed. It still seems to fit in the little rolled away cart perfectly fine so I don't think that's what the issue was. Also noticing these legs right here are cast and they attach right here. So at some point down the road if I had to I guess I could probably rig up some kind of a more solid leg to help uh, if one of these broke I could, I could rig up some kind of a leg, a metal leg. Hey everybody, it's been a couple of months since I uh, made this bracket to hold the Weber grill on the back of the trailer get rid of that junky old grill. And it's been working out really fine except for one thing. I'm still running this off the bottles of gas, the small bottles of propane and uh, what I want to do is I want to convert this so that I can hook it up to the, uh, the gas outlet, quick disconnect gas outlet on the bottom of the trailer here. Now, the uh, main gas bottles up in the front of the trailer already have a regulator on. So you can't just hook the hose up onto here with an adapter and expect it to run correctly because what ends up happening is this already has a regulator on it to regulate the pressure of the gas coming out of the propane bottle uh, that you screw on. And what will happen is the low pressure of the uh, coming off the regulator for the trailer will not be able to overcome the... Uh, this regulator won't function properly. And what will happen is you'll have very poor, if any, gas flow. So to convert this, what I need to do is I need to remove this regulator Weber regulator. So to unscrew this regulator, I've just got to turn it and unscrew it. The problem is it's actually hitting this plastic shield right here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this knob off. 
You'll see once I pull the knob off, this is plastic right here is in the way. And that's keeping me from being able to unscrew this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this nut off. And there are just two Phillips set screws in the back here. And I'll be able to take this whole shield right off. I took one screw out and just loosened the other one and that allows me to move this out far enough so I can just take this whole assembly right out. So now with this out, I should be able to unscrew this. Oh, that's tight. Alright, so I'm going to put a wrench on here. That must be a metric size, so I'll have to go get a metric wrench. Alright, I gotta tell you, that was pretty tight, but I was able to get it out. So now, what I have is I have this adapter, this quick disconnect adapter that was on the old grill that I saved before I threw the old grill out. Knowing full well, it might come in handy. Now if you don't have this fitting, they do sell these online. I've seen them on eBay. The interesting thing is almost all of the ones that I've, I've seen on eBay, they were not this style. They did not have female threads on them. They had a a nipple with male threads on them so you might have to get some sort of adapter to to go in between and you can't get much luckier than this it's a perfect fit so I'm not going to need a, a bushing adapter or reducing bushing or anything to get this on here but what I am going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of sealant on these threads before I tighten this up all right got my uh, fitting all tightened up I'm going to reinstall it That's why I didn't want to unscrew that screw all the way if I didn't have to. Kind of tight corners in there. Okay, brackets back on. Now, originally, this was facing up. And I just made it so it faced down so it would be easier for me to put the uh, hose on, thinking from the bottom, but it now occurs to me that the knob won't line up correctly and uh, with this notch as far as what setting it's at. So I've got to change that. <laughs> I can't rotate it with the bracket on. At least put the bracket tight. Let's see if I can do it with loose. All right, that's got to face that way. In other words, if I had this pointing down like I wanted it, then when I put this knob on, this wouldn't line up. The off position wouldn't line up with this hole, and etc. Yeah, I know. It's not the right wrench, but it's the one I used to take it off. It wasn't that tight. Yeah, that all looks good. There is the quick disconnect hose. It came with the trailer and the grill. Now, it went on the other grill, and it's the fitting I took off of there, so there's no reason that should not be going on. What the heck is going on? I'm thinking the check valve inside there is stuck. When you push this on, there's a fitting in there that's supposed to move in. Okay, I just unscrewed this fitting. And since, unlike the regulator, it doesn't really impinge on this when I'm turning it, I can actually unscrew that without taking this all apart. any damage on this. Maybe now with it out, I can put extra force on this and see why. 
the balls are loose. Well, that ain't the problem. It's gotta be this darn check valve. It's gotta be this end. All right, what you guys missed is I went down in the basement and what I did was I uh, put this on a solid surface, pulled up on this and pushed down as hard as I could. Then I put my adjustable wrench on this so that it couldn't go past this beveled edge right here. Gave it a whack with my dead blow mallet and it popped in. And then I was able to pull it back out. But you see how when I do this, that should just pop right out and it's not. So what's going on is there's, I don't know if it's corrosion on the brass, oxidation or what built up on there and that's what's giving me fits. The problem is the check valve springs back up into this locked closed position so I can't see what's in there. Now I don't know whether or not they make a lubricant that's safe for use on these kind of propane connections. I'll have to check online to see if I can find something. But for now I've got to work in it again. Not not great. My worry is that it's going to be difficult to put this in when it's in here. Alright, now let's leak test it. Alright, so I'm going to use this uh, Snoop leak, leak detector. You just put a drop on the fitting and uh, the form bubbles immediately. I got two bottles and this is the unopened one. Okay, gas is on. So first I'm gonna check for the obvious place, which is my new fitting. Two that makes it easier to reach in the tight places, which is handy. No leaks there. Let's check at the coupling itself. No leaks there. And just a good measure, we'll check at the back. I'm getting air in this tube. That looks good. Looks good. Okay, everybody, I took the grate out and then I uh, just took a few minutes to clean out the uh, grease that had collected in here because I was actually a little embarrassed to show how much was in there. It was way too much. Anyways, uh, still really dirty but I got the heavy stuff out and uh, now I've verified that the uh, igniter is working so we'll just give this another try that's the high start position oh there we go and it lit now some of the little holes are blocked because of the fact that I just uh, Got grease all over them. Typically what ends up happening though is, there we go, what eventually ends up happening is as the tube heats up the grease melts off. And there we go. Now that's actually the high position. And one of the things I've never really cared about with this burner is it's never really ever worked tremendously well as far as burn efficiency. I'm used to seeing a lot more blue flame meaning that you're getting a better oxygen propane mixture and this has a lot more orange flame than I care for but that being said uh, it is working. This area here that looks like it's not burning right now is actually the blue flame I'm talking about kind of hard to see in this light. I doubt it's going to come out on the camera at all. It's also windy out here. And if I put it down to low, does it stay lit? It most certainly does. So at this point, I would say I'm happy to report that this is working. So I'm going to conclude the, uh, the Weber grill video series right here. 
because I've gone as far as I can go, other than cleaning it. <laughs> and uh, next up is going to be uh, probably the uh, sewer line repair, which uh, it's actually a defect from the manufacturer that uh, you guys are going to have to see to believe. <laughs> 